Hey everyone, welcome back. Post trade deadline hockey buzzcast. We're all rested up now, and we have we're not going to talk to you for six hours. Now we're just going to talk to you for a little under one hour. I'm not. Um, yeah, somewhere in there. So, uh, Russ, what's going on? So we don't talk politics on this show, and I'm not really going to talk politics. But when it intersects with my favorite football team, I feel like I must. So yesterday, a report came out that Robert Kennedy Jr. was going to run for president, and he is going to pick a vice president. And it was either Jesse Ventura, a noted wrestler, but also governor of Minnesota. Right. And, and great actor. And, and right, great actor. And Aaron Rodgers, the presumed quarterback of the New York Jets. Okay. Right. Um, since then, uh, there has been a domain bought on GoDaddy of all places. That's where I house my sites. And, and that's, you know, Kennedy Rodgers. 2024, something like that. So that's bought already. Um, Jesse Ventura's kids just today said that Kennedy never contacted him. And everybody's presuming it's up to Aaron Rodgers and what he wants to do. And so the question is, in the rule of law, can you run for, for vice president and still play quarterback in the NFL? Yeah, I mean you can. I mean, you think so you think you could do it effectively? I don't no. know. We've never had this come up. Like I don't know. I don't know the. No, you, can, you said can you? Not can you do okay. it effectively? I mean you. I mean, gee, okay. I mean, okay. One thing or the other is going to suffer. Either his game planning for Miami, or his debate against uh Kamala Harris and uh you know whoever Trump right. so one of the, you know you can't be in two places at once I mean I, I guess you could if uh if you're on I practice would they let him skip practice no I bet but hey maybe he can be two places at once if he's doing ayahuasca and then he is like his spirit is is doing uh, <laughs> the, uh, only, you know. the only comparable I have to this is a guy who was never vice president, but Jack Kent Cook, who was a quarterback in your neck of the woods. Jack Kemp, yeah. And Kemp, sorry, yeah. Yeah, but he that he was quarter he was quarterback in the set in the sixties. Yeah, and he, he was he was Bob Dole's VP in ninety six. I don't think he was right. gonna be uh right. I don't think he was gonna replace a, a that's right. he was a VP though. Well at least I figured out that he was a VP. I, that's what was in my head, but oh, Ger- this is crazy. Gerald Gerald Ford was a was a football player at Michigan. Yeah, in, in the 20s. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's wearing a leather helmet. Yeah, in the 20s. All right. I don't know what to say other than the Jets signed Tyrod Taylor to be the backup, and I have a strange feeling he could be the starter, and there goes another Jets season. Thank you. Oh, my Thank God. All right. Let's get on with this. <laughs> uh, it's the 13th, right? Uh, yeah, why not? Sure. So, yeah. Hello, Hockey World. It is Wednesday. Right. Is it Wednesday? I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind. Hello, Hockey World. It is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. I'm Michael Agello, and the Buzztron 2000 has a virus. I'm <laughs> Russ Cohen from Sports Auto. Can't wait to hear why. And I'm Eklund. You're watching the Hockey Buzzcast on HockeyBuzz.com. This is the podcast that comes every Monday through Friday to fill you in on the comings and goings in the hockey world. And Mike, why, Mike? Why? Why does the Buzztron... The bus drop, for those of you who don't know, today I put up my – oh, shoot. One second, guys. Stay there. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying that the bus tron has chlamydia or any kind of STD, but it does have some sort of virus because some of the pick – well, I mean, we know that these selections are based on strength of schedule and a number of other – Yes. You no. Know, yeah. Strength of schedule and basically, you know, you know that uh, that the um, the 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 FanDuel commercial where the guy says, "I have a system." Yes. And then they go and, they, and the cat is hitting two balloons that has Buffalo and Philadelphia. I have a feeling the Buzztron is using that cat. <laughs> well, I want to know. It's probably something to do with Toronto, Mike, right? No, 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 not Toronto, not Toronto. Okay. Well, the bus trend is the, the bus trend is fifteen different factors. My wife and I have been working on it for now. This is, I think, its eighth year, um, and it's it's really cut. She's a PhD, so you know, take that for what it's worth. Yes. I know a little bit, a little bit about hockey, so we put this together and you know, throw it into our computer and come up with 
the way I think it's best to project the final projected standings, as opposed to what you always see now, like the Flyers or whatever, have a 45% chance or a 58% chance. I always think those percentage of chances are ridiculous because right, I do too. Because, you know, if, if you, everybody has a chance of making the playoffs and not everybody can make the playoffs. So even if like a guy has a 3% chance of making the playoffs, they still have a 3% chance of making the playoffs. Um, so I'd like to see who exactly based on who they're going to play and what's happening injury wise and what's happening schedule wise. Like if they have back to back games or they're traveling a lot, all those things go into play for this factor mm -hmm. to factor into this. So that comes that that brings us up to the, uh, to what the Buzztron does. It plays out all the games. Last night was the first night of predictions. Um, and we went seven and three last night. So it's not bad. It's a good start. Um, so uh, we won seven games, lost this, three this games. This is unchecked. There is no government oversight over this. <laughs> There's not like. Well, it's checked in terms of I posted before I posted the game. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I posted okay. before. And I don't, I don't just tell you what I did. Well, we, we, we should actually have more government oversight over the Justice Department and oh, never mind. <laughs> so the, last year, just to, just to put everything in perspective, last year, okay, 2023, it predicted 193 games right. 112 games wrong, which is a 64% winning percentage. It's a good winning percentage. Which is good winning percentage, right? Like, you know, Our that's um, on fan duel. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Do winning, it. So last year, winning nights, if you if you bet every night, you would have won on 26 nights and lost on eight nights. So that's, um, and then, and there would have been, you would have come out even on six. So that's like the, um, that's the, that's the buzz round. So last night's games, um, the ones we got wrong last night were, um, it actually had San Jose beating Philly, which is interesting. <laughs> It was close. Um, and it was a close game, right? See? <laughs> it was. Um, I'll bring up, let me bring up last night's games real quick. So, And then it had um, a couple others on there as well. But I'm going to bring up last night's games real fast so we can go. Anyway, if, if, you want, if you want me to know where my – I want to uh, get – we'll get there in a second. Okay. Yeah, let him, this is a build-up, Mike. This is a build-up. Yeah, we're going to get to there. We're going to get to that. I, I, I really can't wait to hear that. <laughs> can't wait to hear what Mike has – what Mike's problem is with this now. Okay, so last night's picks. Tonight, the games we got wrong were – um, we got the Philly game wrong. Um, we got the, we got, it said, it, it said Columbus would beat Montreal. That didn't happen. Okay. Um, and it said Pittsburgh would beat Ottawa and that went, went overtime. So right. that could, could have gone either way. So that's how close it was last night. Um, all the other games that got right, it got Buffalo beating Detroit and all the, all the rest of the games correct. Um, and including, I think one of them going to overtime correctly. Cause it does, it does. I only I only base it on wins and losses. My what I say it, but I actually mm -hmm. does say if they're if the if the losing team is going to get a point or not, um, okay. based on its projections too. So mm -hmm. that plays into it. So seven and three last night, um, seventy percent. So sixty four percent last year for the season. We're at seventy percent right now <laughs> to start off, and uh, and now let's talk about what the standings are going to look like because what I want to let, let's start off with the um, with the, with the with the, with the uh, Metro Division right because okay why not. <laughs> Okay, I have no problem with. Okay, so I'll, I'll, let me let me say what they are. Okay, right. I'll go through it because I can't project. I can't put it up on the screen for some reason. I don't know why I can't figure that out. If you can, Mike, let me know. Oh, yeah, hold on. Okay, if you can put it up. So, um, there are some weird things. When I see this, when I see it play out, I'm like, huh, that is that's kind of strange. But this is what it this is what it believes um, to happen. So we'll see what happens. Um, it has the. Can you get it up, Mike, or no? I'm I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, cool. So that's what she said. I will tell you right. that there's a couple surprises in this. There's a couple. There's a couple of shocking outcomes. I know one. The Mike's going to say right away because it's not over, Mike, as you always like to say. It it's is over. It's, it's not over for the Islanders, according to this. Okay, here we go. Here's the standings. Um, maybe blow that up a little bit. But um, yeah, as, I think that's as good as it gets. But I'll I'll try. Okay, if you can just uh like zoom in on it or whatever. They they, they zoom in on the uh. There we go. Oh, perfect. Good job, Mike. Okay, so you see, as you see here, we go along. You have, we have the uh, Rangers finishing in first, 117 points. Carolina's second, 111. The New York Islanders third with 99 points. Um, he, he says it's over. Um, and then uh, the Atlantic, Boston, Florida, Boston finishing first, Florida yeah. second, Toronto third. Hey, let's do let's do the East. Of let's, the, start, let's start with the start with the Metro. Go ahead, tell me what's wrong with the Metro. Um, with the Metro, I mean, I have no issue with the top two it's going to be rangers carolina sure um i i still don't think the islanders are making the playoffs although the thing is it's like with 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 philadelphia i mean it's tough it's tough to see them fighting off the islanders based on you know the the subtraction yeah. the subtractions the they, they made the injuries yeah um the the sort of the distractions of torts getting suspended for a couple games yeah 
I mean, um, but I, I just, I, I, you know, the Islanders are just not good. They're just Islanders, not good. Here's the thing that you don't know, you know about the Islanders, Mike. They've lost. I know more they've been one hard- goal, more one goal games than any team in the league. I, I know, but so they are not bad. Ba- they, they are they are better than their record appears to be. I agree. I, you know, Waz done some good work there, so I I disagree yeah. with Mike on that. I, I will say the most surprising thing is Washington because mm-hmm. even yeah. though they're in it, we all know they're in it. It's hard to believe they're going to actually get that last yeah. <coughs> the last wild card spot and not the third spot because. You know, they probably have a better path to the third spot. But Ted Starkey pointed something out, and okay. he, and this was interesting. He um, he said the Capitals actually more than a lot of the teams um, control their own destiny because they still play everybody involved. Yeah, that is and correct. Gain points, so maybe that's what makes the math on the wild card possible. That is well, correct. Um, and you know, it would you would think that that would definitely have a play into it. Like I would I would have thought New Jersey would end up better than this um like based on but new jersey schedule the rest of the way is is, tr- is tough and they are not and they didn't up, they didn't they they subtracted right. to foley right and, and that also plays into it the fact what you what you gain and lose at the trade deadline there is a factor called like we just don't basically we don't care anymore factor which is like the pittsburgh penguin <laughs> right, you know? right but but they, but they subtracted to foley i mean yeah. they improved their goaltending their yeah. defense is their defense is still not good without without hamilton uh, yeah. And they actually traded a depth guy in Miller, so they've subtracted a yeah. lot. Um, but no, though, I, I, so I, Washington, I, I quibble with a little bit because it would be surprising if they end up with the second wild card with the worst goal differential of any of the teams within six or seven points of a yeah. playoff spot. So that's the one. But the one I, the one I'm just, I shake my head at is you having uh, Florida finishing in second, to Boston. That's yeah. just patently absurd. You know, the, the buzz tr- the buzztron should the buzztron should be investigated this is <laughs> this is like hal you know f- screwing up on 2001 yeah. space odyssey i mean my, my god i mean well, if you remember last year we had this we had the same discussion the first day the buzztron came out mike and there was one thing on there that you that you were so freaking upset about you're like cuz it had the savers missing the playoffs by one point and you're like that's <laughs> oh, it oh come on it did go back go back and check the tape i just did <laughs> The Sabres missing by one point. You're like, that's ridiculous. The Sabres are so far out of it. There's no way they can miss the playoffs by one point. And what happened? The Sabres missed the playoffs by one point. Correct? Well, well, okay, yeah, yes, they did. But I, I, I want to. I'm going to go back and do some research to see if that's actually the case. But here, here, okay, here we right <laughs> now. After after beating Detroit last night, the Sabres are five points behind. Yeah. Uh, they're five points behind the Islanders and five points behind Detroit. And on this thing, you have them finishing 15 points behind. Washington. That would right. mean that would mean in the last 16, 17 games that they're going to go two and fifteen. Yeah, that that's absolutely ridiculous. I agree. I mean, I went and, back. I went back and checked uh, on the Buzztron, and back in nineteen forty eight, they said Dewey was the winner. In the <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the thing about the Buzztron that you have to take into account. The bus the Buzztron was counting da- a, a dangling chads in two thousand. Right. The Buzztron, the Buzztron predicts on what should happen. Okay, Bas- basically, this is that it, it's not an upset thing. It's it, although it does predict upset sometimes, but it basically is saying this is what this, this is all based on what should happen now. And a lot of times, you get these big, just big disparities, like the Buffalo Sabers going two and what, what fourteen or whatever, something ridiculous like that. I do agree, um, and that's just basically because every game when you look at the Buffalo Sabers, they are they're 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 not favored in each of those games, right? They're gonna they're gonna fall 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 back even though they were predicted to win last night this can change pretty quickly because if a, if a game is predicted wrong on the, by the buzztron the next day the standings reflect that um if a game is predicted right by the buzztron the standings won't won't change go into more detail on that i don't know what that means okay so what that means is okay so for example last, going into last night's game even though i didn't put it up the flyers had 90 no, not 91 i'm sorry the flyers weren't the team i should look at but the teams we got wrong oh yeah yeah sorry yeah the flyers had 90 at 89 points going into last night's game, okay? Project, okay. Projected 89 points. So, of course, because they were projected to lose last night. They win. So, today's Buzztron has them at 91 points. It gives them that win because okay. it, it, it is only projecting the games forward. Okay? So, basically, it, it changes change that from a projection of a loss to a projection of a win, but still continues to project the games forward from there. Does that make sense? Yes. So, every night, it does change a little bit um, based on, you know, what happens. Now, in the Sabres, 
if the Sabres win a couple games in a row, that could that could change things drastically because suddenly every time they win a game, by the way, their their ranking gets a little bit higher in the Buzztron. They they if they're on a streak, it gets a little bit higher. Um, and that can change all the rest of the game. That's like, fair because the math does get temporarily better right. when it happens. And also all the rest of the games would suddenly change. Like if the Sabres ranking went up, all the it wouldn't just be like a few of the games. And that's where the Buzztron doesn't does fall apart sometimes. But I still think it's more accurate than the percentage predicting thing because I think that what you're doing is you're playing out all these games. It doesn't mean it's going to happen this way for sure. But it the only is, thing that Buzztron would have trouble with that is like Detroit winning six in a row, losing six right. in a row. Right, right, right. It doesn't go. It doesn't. It does all that. While it does count factor in streaks of, of, of like three wins or three losses in a row, um, which is probably why last night Buffalo was favored in that game by by the Buzztron because the because the Detroit lost a bunch of games in a row. Um, it does. And you're right. It, it doesn't necessarily factor in that you know they could go on a run, right? Which is you're and, and of course that can happen. Um, but when they do go, but the more they go on a run, the more likely they, so when they win three in a row, the more likely they are to win four. If they win four, the more likely they are to win five. That does do that. So it does, and it, or if they lose five, the more likely they are to lose five, six. I, mean, I so. agree with what the Buzztron has in in the West. In the West, yeah. The West, look at the West for a second. So yeah, Colorado, Dallas, I agree Winnipeg, with it. Vancouver, um, Edmonton. I, I, I disagree with Boston too. There's no way Boston beats, beats out Florida. It's not going to happen. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm really curious about it, and I wanted to go into it. I'm going to go into it more in depth, like as far as I want to look, because I can look game by game and tell you what's going to happen there, um, as far as what it's I, saying. I mean, right, um, right now, Florida is up by three points and has a game in hand. The only uh, thing in terms of scheduling that's an advantage for Boston is they do play Florida twice, and they uh, beat, and they have a, they have a pretty good record against Florida in the regular season. Now they haven't they have necessarily it, it, historically. What it does is it bases the record in the regular season. On the last three seasons, projectingly, like getting more important, like last season versus the season before, first season or that. So, remember, Boston last year was really good. <laughs> All right, so when that that does play into this, the, you know, this will play into the fact that Boston was so good last year that they are going to be, you know, they're going to be hard. They're to not, beat. They're, but they're not as good they're, this. Year. They're not as good this year, but they're still not bad. No, so, no, no, they're, they're not. No, they're not. The bad. thing is, and we've talked about this. What is the percentage? plus or minus for injuries. As an example, right. Mitch Marner is not going to play against the Flyers. Yeah, what, right. what does that do to that game? So Mitch Marner, Mitch Marner is a, um, I think I have written down, but I think he's a, he's considered a first line player, you know, right. every, every, so a first liner, if a first liner is missing versus a second liner versus a third liner, um, that changes, that changes the teams, the team's values based on, based on how strong the injury, not just the injury, but based on how strong it is. So, if Marner's out, like it'll it'll calculate. Okay, it's going to take away a certain amount of points for missing a first line player. Um, so let's see. Like, if you want, it, we can go forward a little bit and see what it's saying for. Um, yeah, we might as well because I'm sure Mike wants to know. Yeah, give me one second, guys, to do that because I have to get my other other computer. So continue on for one minute. If you want to talk about something else or some, or we can do this. I'll be right there. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm, I'm going to go get my uh, uh, tin foil hat. No, um, Mike, we should talk about last night with the Rangers beating Carolina one nothing. Yeah. Um, I didn't see what the save situation was, but Kochekov played great. That's what I took out of that. And so yeah. quick, quick actually now is what? Like he sets a he ties a record, he gets another win. But Kochekov is the story here in a sense because this does give Carolina a real um insurance policy against Freddie. I mean, I, honestly, if I, I would still go, I would go with Kachetkov over Freddie because Freddie is. Too, but I'm not sure they will. No, not no. Just... The, at least they're going to start with them. I mean, and, and you know, they're not going to face each other until the second round right. um, because I think the, the Rangers are going to are going to win the division. But um, you know, who they play in the second round? If it is the Islanders, I mean, I, I, I like I said, if it okay, let's just say this: if it's the Flyers. They can play anybody in goal that they have. Even Auntie right. Ronto is playing in Chicago, and I think they'd beat the Flyers. Right. So you know, but if they play the Islanders, I mean, the Islanders could play that you know that that defensively conservative style that they normally have to play, uh, and conceivably could beat them. But I mean, well, it was Shesterkin last night, correct? Yes. Uh 
No, yeah, it was, was no, it was cool. It was quick. The previous it was quick. Night. It was quick night night night. Last night was just yeah, right. Right. You're right. Quick played New Jersey and Shesterkin played against yeah, yeah, Carolina. Right. But you know, it would, it would, it would, it would. I would think that that's an indicator. If they play Kachetkov in a key game against the Rangers a month before the playoffs, that would lead me to believe that you know they might be going with Kachetkov when the playoffs come around. It'll be interesting. I mean, so, you know, right yeah, now, I, I think they, I think they're going to go k- 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 check up there with the playoffs. I think they are. Really, I think that you have to. I mean, Ed, that was a four-point game last night, and they were, yeah, yeah. they were four-point. They were there's a four-point difference, so they win that game. They're two points behind. I, yeah, I, I think they may, they probably are going with Kachekov. Yeah, they have to be. I think. I, I honestly think they have to be. Don't, don't you? That makes them tougher, I think, because <clears throat> it's more of the unknown for the other team too. Right, right, exactly. Way more. So although there's, this, although there's, you know, there's a book on him now. He's played enough games that people. Oh, no, I know, but but still, like I think when you have Anderson, you know what what beats Anderson. I, I think to check up, there's a book, but it could change. Right. I have to ask Eck: <clears throat> Is the play of Patrick Kane affecting the Buzztron? Uh, not directly. No. I mean, it it it, it, it affects and in fact that, that he's it, there's that's more of a team thing there. No, it wouldn't be okay. it wouldn't be. I mean, if he was injured, it would affect it. Um, right. If he, was, if he wasn't playing, but it doesn't it doesn't have it doesn't underperforming is not well, doesn't account for individual streaks as they're going on uh, now, like individual I'll, player streaks. I'll say this because and, and you know this because I said this in our in our group text. I think the Red Wings are spent. I think they're done because yeah, I think they're in uh, trouble. Yeah. Because la- last night. They had absolutely nothing against the Sabers, and you know, granted, yeah. granted, the Sabers are playing. The Sabers think they have life. Now they're five points out of a playoff spot. They're playing desperate hockey. They're playing fast and loose because you know they traded Middlestat and they traded Oposo and they traded Johnson, and nobody expects them. Right. And you know, so that's the. Um, but the the Wings come had come in losing five in a row. They were still without Larkin. They're playing Alex Lyon in goal. Um, and they're being forced to because Huso, I believe, is still hurt, and James Reimer is the other goalie, and Kosa is too young. And they've really um, lost total faith. In, I was talking to Kevin the other day. Huso is they've really lost total faith in him. They, they don't. Right. Huso. So I mean, and, and you, I'm sorry, you have to lay the blame for all the for all the credit that he should give for some of the moves that he's made, like you know, getting to Brinkett. Uh, and you know, signing Kane, you know, winning that sweepstakes. Yeah. You have to you have to blame Steve Eiserman for the problem with the Red Wings over the last couple of years and the decision that he made. The goaltending was the problem, and he decided on Vili Huso. Yeah, and right. There were, there were other teams that tried to get Vili Huso too, so they're just as much to blame because Vili Huso had no track record other than half a season. Uh, in St. Louis, and then dropped, dropped a rhyme there, Mike, for a second. You they they tried to get Billy Huso too, so they <laughs> it was pretty impressive. Sorry, Dang, well, I did it. I did it unconsciously, and <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. it. I, liked it. it you were, you were, I thought you were going. I thought you were going to get into like a street rap there. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I'm not. No, no, I, I'm. i never mind. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but the but the prop the problem here is is now they have no answer. Now, you know, Kosa is, what, 21, and he's not ready. He's playing in the AHL. He's yeah. not ready. Huso, they've lost confidence in. Reimer is, at best, a back NHL backup. Yeah. And Lyon is an NHL backup who's being forced into playing. And he gave up, I think, four goals in the first period, and they pulled him. He looked really, he looked really bad last night. But, but they, all but, look, they all look good. But the reality is Lyon's been way better than anybody thought he would be. Yeah, oh, no, no, he yeah. has. But part of the reason, look. When I picked them for last, clearly I was wrong, but they've made changes since then. But yeah. the one thing I was consistent on for them not making the playoffs was you can't count on Huso or Lyon. And right. Lyon is a decent backup. That's what he is. So counting on Lyon was really a failed proposition, I felt, all along. I think so, too. I mean, and, I mean, it, and it really was just uh, like they got lucky on type thing. You know, to me, like they got yeah. lucky that Lyon – because the, obviously the plan was Huso. That was the plan. So right. they – that's the mistake, like you said. So they have Lyon. The fact that he gave them what he gave them really was something that they got they got a break on. Um, so you, you could definitely blame. I think Eisman does have to take responsibility for the goaltending situation. I mean, I don't think that that's. 
<laughs> it's not no it's, wait, we already it's not lou it. it's not lou's commodore 64. it's a radio shack color computer is what it is it's the one that plugs into your television um okay so let's talk about what you were asking me the, the about toronto and philly and then we'll talk about tonight's games too all right all right so it has toronto beating philly in in, in flat out regulation okay um, yeah which i think is you know i, I think don't that's think that's legitimate that's not a shocker. I don't think of name, but even though it's, even though the game's in Philly, oh, the home ice advantage does. That's another big thing too. It does. It does take home ice teams that are better at home right. ice and not too. That's another big factor. So tonight's games. Let's look forward. We only have like uh, four games tonight. It looks like so. Um, there's L.A. over St. Louis in overtime. Okay. Winnipeg over Nashville in overtime. Okay. Edmonton over Washington, and Vancouver over Colorado in overtime. So that's probably the most interesting game. Is the last one, but. Those four are, you know, they're, they're some all tight. overtime games. That's that's weird. Oh, except for one. It has one one not. Oh, it has um, okay. yeah, it has Edmonton beating Washington straight up. But the rest are overtime games. The other thing it does take into account, which I think is pretty cool, that the other others usually don't, <clears throat> is that as the season goes along, um, there's a factor that makes for more overtime, more more one point games because as we start to see more, that doesn't tend to be what you have to see as teams start to play tighter and tighter and tighter. Right, right. So as it gets further along, you'll see that there's more in overtime games than not. But you right now there's a lot of um, yeah, there's not they're not that many, but there's a lot, quite a few in overtime games in the there right thing, now. Though, and mm-hmm. this is just me thinking, I don't have any math behind it. If the team like the Capitals is going to make it. They're gonna to have to be a team like Edmonton along the way to do it. Yeah, well, let's look at Washington's. Let's look look at Washington's. I can get you Washington's rest of the way. So let's do that. Um, yeah. what, what, at least what it has right now. Okay. Um, okay. So Washington. Here we go. Edmonton. So it's a loss against Edmonton. Um, then they're in Seattle. It has a win a win in Seattle. Um, it has a win in Vancouver. Wow. Okay. So that must be something that with those two teams and their history or something like that that plays into yeah. that. That has a win in Calgary. So you're looking at a streak there. That's a pretty big. Like they're 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 winning Seattle, Vancouver, Calgary. So that Western um, Canadian swing is going to be good. That's for everything them. for him. Yeah, because then it has yeah. a losing to losing to Toronto, um, getting one point out of Carolina, um, beating, uh, beating Winnipeg. Wow. wow. So I know it's it. it, it that's what I'm yeah, saying. Um, that's why this game tonight. No. It's yeah. weird that they're losing, but they are beating like three heavyweights so far. Yeah, yeah, they really are. Um, yes, yeah, so they really are, and they are. And then it has um, beating Detroit, losing to Toronto, um, getting one point out of Boston, um, beating Buffalo, beating Pittsburgh, um, losing to Carolina, beating Ottawa, um, beating Detroit. So they're scheduled. They do have to, they have to do a pretty weak schedule in some places. Once if they if they can get right. through this little if they can get through this run here, they got a yeah. shot. You know, because then again, they get then they're beating Buffalo, they're losing to Tampa Bay, getting one point out of Boston, and losing to Philly at the end. So it's weird. So this this is um, it's just that's where that's what it has right now. These are all you know, obviously, and like I said, all those things can change. If Washington were to lose tonight, perhaps that could be enough to send the percentages the other way. So it like one loss tonight could not necessarily mean just two points less. It could mean five points less because that their new number now is projected right. Again. The rest of the way so i also have a thing that tracks that and i'm going to have up up, up you know you're going to see the the point differential from night to night so like how many points were gained or lost based on that and sometimes that means like a team could not even play and move up because if they're playing a couple teams that suddenly are moving downward that changes things in the future too so they that it's just it's uh, you know does that make sense yeah but how do you prevent this from being a garbage in garbage out situation where yes <laughs> What was created here was great, but you're you're the hockey part of it. Yeah, I'm the hockey part of it. So, uh, right, so I, that, I'm the garbage in part of it. So for right. me, so for me, it's like remember the I have this thing you used to call the X factors, which you used to use right. all the time. So to me, this is just me going into um. I mean, a lot of a lot of it is just pure math. It's not just like you know what their record is against another team. It just comes out to percentages and stuff like that. That's you know how many points how many points they get on an average versus like if they get when right. they play the and they play the Red Wings, they average 1.6 points per game or whatever, that kind of thing. But um, but then yeah, the stuff with the um, losses and uh, you know, and how much how much of fact how much of a factor of missing a player would be, or how much of a factor, you know, giving up that is all me. Yeah, so that's definitely that's just uh my own. 
my own thing. So yeah, there, there, it's very possible that could be garbage in, garbage out. I agree with you. Um, okay. But so far, you know, last year sixty-four percent. We'll see how it does does this year. But I would 64. say sixty-four. How appropriate, Commodore sixty-four. There we go. And tonight's games, I think you know you got to you know the only real upset I see in that is is would be Vancouver. You know, um, right. be Vancouver I just losing. I know about all the overtime games, but I get the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, the overtime games do matter, obviously, but that's yeah. one. Of, that's another thing that I don't think is taken into account when you look at percentages percentage of making the playoffs you know like that really is something that does matter like and so overtime games are you know you, you get a point if you if the percentages of one if the if the points by one team is close enough to the points of the other team that it's that it merits a point that you get a they you know if the point if, if there's and that range changes as the year goes on so if that makes any sense so it gets it gets more and more ties as we go along um but yeah all that can change so it, it, it it's interesting it, it is a night to night thing but to me it tends to give you a, lo- a little bit more accurate of a way of looking at it. I don't know. I might be wrong, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, I, right now I don't think it's that far off. Yeah. Uh, um, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, the standings are, you know, like, we, can, we could all get, I mean, Florida has been incredible. Like, and there, and there's this, the, like the last night's game. Let's talk about that for a second. That was just yeah. an, a, phenom- a phenomenal game. I mean, and tonight they play Carolina, you know, which is also a really tough game. Um, so that's a back. That's a really that's a killer back to back. You know, going from Dallas to Carolina for Florida, um, all on the road. I think tonight. I think they're on the road, right? Well, no, that's it's not. They don't play Florida. They don't play Carolina tonight. What am I saying? Sorry, um, not sure where they play tonight. But and then their next game is against Carolina. So yeah, I mean Florida will. Can they fall out? You know, I mean, looking. Let's look at their thing for a second. We'll go can through they there. Fall out of the playoffs? No. No, not fall out of the playoffs. We can fall out of first place. You know, that is the big thing. Unlikely. It yeah. seems unlikely at this point, but the, the point differential is not that great, Mike. You know, like, all right, so it has them beating Dallas, like we did. Well, he did last night. It, did. it had them beating Dallas. Um, has them uh, one point out of the Carolina game. That's tomorrow night. Um, losing to Tampa Bay, which is always possible. Like, that is something that, you know, those teams, when they play each other, something could happen now. And Tampa's, Tampa, obviously, the game means a lot to Tampa. Um, beating Nashville, getting one point from the Rangers, beating Philly, losing to Boston, beating the Islanders, beating Detroit, beating Toronto, beating Montreal, um, beating Ottawa, losing to Boston, beating Ottawa. Getting- I, see, I just look at this as an yes. overall, as an overall perspective. Yeah, Boston. Failed at the deadline Correct. to address their main big time need. Yeah. Big time failed. Their big their big ad was a rat, a big fat rat, and yeah. they're pushing on social media. But what's right. he going to do in games? Yeah, zippity, zippity freaking dude. Unless he can play first line center, all you did was add a fourth line guy who's going to end up in the penalty box most of the time. Correct. So you know, whereas Florida. You know they 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 added a useful piece yeah. in, in Kyle Oposo. And now they did they did lose Ekblad for a couple of weeks, but this is a team that was played without Ekblad for two months, so they're right. used to that. Yeah. So I mean I I, I you know I I don't I I don't and, and they added Tarasenko, who's been red hot since they acquired him. So I I just don't I don't yeah. see it. True. I mean well you know and yeah right I mean it. Boston would have to go on a crazy streak for this to happen. And according to this, they will go on a crazy streak because, <laughs> because they should, because, you know, I was looking at Boston thing and, and, and they should, but that's the point is that that's what, that is the biggest problem with this thing to me is, and I got to figure out a way to do this because as it, as, as it goes, when I tell you each of these games individually, you can say, yeah, the Boston should probably win those games, but they're not going to win them all, you know? And that's the reality is, right. and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know where to put that or how to make that different than, you know, than, then you know I already do with uh, some some teams beat other teams more often, and so it does change. Usually that'll stop it, but in this case, they're gonna like run the table. Now that's not gonna happen. So we'll you know, but the, these are these are the teams they're playing. Ready? So they're playing. Uh, let's go through the teams real quick. They're playing St. Louis, Montreal, Philly, Ottawa, the Rangers. Now that's a trap game. The Rangers could definitely beat them. Um, Philly, Ottawa, Philly, Florida, and it has them beating Florida. I remember Tampa, Washington. Nashville, then Carolina, Florida, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Washington, Ottawa. When you go through that, okay, 
there's a lot, there's quite a few teams on there that you'd think they're definitely going to beat. Carolina and the Rangers, they play twice each. Now, they're not, they're not going to win all four of those games. <laughs> no. So, Here, that's here's the, some factors, Zach. Uh, I'm looking at Boston. Yeah. They're averaging 3.28 goals a game. Yeah. Uh, 23.6 on the power play, which is like number 10. Uh, 81.7 on the PK, which is like middle of the pack. Um, actually, no, it's a little higher than that. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, those, and, and, well, and here's the other one, 28.6 in the shootout, which actually is lousy. That's awesome. Um, the Red Wings are 80% in the shootout. Really? 80. And it's bizarre when you look at goaltending, you know, like the Red Wings goaltending versus the Bruins goaltending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. You know, I think goaltending is a big part of the shootout. A lot of, right? you know. a lot of good goaltenders suck in shootouts. That's true. Not, true. not good in breakaways. Nashville's undefeated in the shootout. So I wonder if the Buzztron has that stat available. Doesn't have a shootout. I, I didn't. I have not put that in, which is interesting. Um, it has. It does have. Is um, it good? Based yeah. on all these overtime games, if they lapse into shootouts, a good point. Good favor, like if Nashville gets in a the shootout, they're undefeated. Well, take, every year I add another factor, so I'm going to put that in my notes. Take that, I'm going to put that in my notes here to add that as a factor next year. Another because, data point. Yeah, because I, I like when I can come up with another factor that is not. Just me saying, well, Nashville's better than them. You know, I like right. you can actually do something like that. That definitely is the best is the best way to do it. I like that. That's a good one. Thanks, Russ. That'll be fun. So yeah. Buzz Tron will continue to improve. So Dan B says good. the Red Wings haven't won a single game since putting a waste management patch on their sweater. <laughs> <laughs> the plant like garbage. There you go. That is fantastic. I love that. That is funny. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> so um so yeah, so, what other games? What other games can we talk about last night? Oh, so we, we should talk about the suspension um, that yeah. came down and um, four games. Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote yesterday. I wrote something interesting, Russ. I wrote I wrote an article about is this thing really good for the NHL, which is the what yeah. the Rangers are doing I with this guy. or just the uh, Rempe in general. Like the okay. Rangers, so, the Rangers and Rempe is is, is 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 a throwback type deal. Like you know, it's very much like to me. Yeah, it's like I keep bringing in this guy. Yeah, I have a definite opinion because, okay, I think it's hard for a new guy to break into this league as an enforcer because the problem is the average person, and even we were saying it after a while, he can't fight every game. Right. Don't right. expect a guy to fight every game. It's not realistic. Right. But yet, every game he's going into, there's one guy on every other team that wants to prove that he's the toughest. So they're all starting with him at the, you know, at the beginning of games, like McDermott was the last one, right? right. So then, okay, he can't oblige all of them. But right. then again, one second, sorry guys, one second, one second. I'm going to listen. Yeah. I'm yeah, you can, can be up with camera for one second. Fine. But then you get McDermott saying that, well, you know, he should have fought me, and then after the hit, he didn't answer the bell. But again, so there's like a total disregard for future health of any new. Enforcer, not only Rempe breaking in. Now, Rempe deserves the suspension for mm -hmm. sure. But the only thing is, and I brought this up, and I really do believe in this. Um, he's six eight, so he's bigger than Chara, and I think he's got no Chara was nine. Chara was six oh, nine. Is he six nine. Okay, I thought he was six seven for some reason. And and I wonder what the wingspan is on him. But Chara used to complain about this, and you do see it where if a guy's five foot ten, five or eleven, even if you are trying to line up a hit, right. A lot of times you are going to hit his head. Should there be a chart or something where refs look at that and say, "Okay, we got this guy in tonight," and yeah. we have to do, we have to call it a little different because it's not like a five ten guy on a five ten guy. That's what I kind of wonder too. That's interesting. I mean, you know, now the now the Devils go out and they get McDermott essentially for this. Right. That a lot of people think to fight Rampe. Like, yeah, well, no, there's no question they did. And we haven't seen that in a while in NHL. And then he like, shot his mouth up after the game because yeah. when they waved at the bench, which I don't agree with, but this is the younger generation. But the point was, you know, when, when he says something like the guy didn't answer the bell, my answer to that was you could have gone back in the game and elbowed him. He right. doesn't have to have a fight. It exactly. Doesn't, it doesn't always have to result in a fight. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It should. Because it shouldn't this guy six six foot eight. Every team wants to fight him now. Yeah, and 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 you know the Rangers fans are chanting his name, and it's it's um yeah, 
it's definitely gotten it's like something to the Rangers. Yeah. Not in the sense that the fighting is giving them momentum, but he's definitely that line with the two six foot seven guys with Edstrom too. They're taking the heat off of a lot of other Rangers that maybe are a little tired down the stretch. They're right. fresh legs. They're young and enthusiastic. And that does a good team. We see what young players can do to a team, especially down the stretch. I don't well, know if they're playing in the playoffs. Act. I have no idea. Well, I'll, of course, I'll take this conversation where probably most people don't want me to go. But right. um, I mean, I think Rempe deserved the suspension. It was an yeah. elbow. It was a. Uh, he went out of his way. Apparently, you know, Siegenthaler was the one who responded against him when Nathan, when he hit Nathan Bastion in the last game against right. the Devils. Correct. So this was, you know, he was uh, seeking to get Siegenthaler, and he did. Right. Um, but the hit that he had on Siegenthaler is no worse than the what he did against Ilya Labushkin of the Leafs last week, and he didn't even get a hearing. For that one, so I mean, again, I call yeah. I, I call upon the uh, I I call the uh, uh, what the Department of Player Safety has done regarding a certain team, which is an over officious suspension on Morgan Riley for something that was really not even harmful to uh, it was just a it was just a uh, a response to a stupid act by uh, Ridley Gregg, and I, I apparently loved my commentary. Um, but uh, well, Labushkin, the difference between Labushkin and Siegenthaler is Siegenthaler's concussed. He's out. Labushkin played the next game, and that shouldn't matter. The but act, it does. we know it does. Right, right, right. But it, but at the point, but Labushkin had been knocked out of the game. They didn't know if he was concussed or and he, apparently he was kept out because of concussion protocol. Right. It was a high hit against the glass on the head and he didn't even get a two minute charging minor. So that's what I'm saying. George Perro, this is one of the reasons Put people have Soprano's, uh, last What's last that? Put up Tony Soprano's last thing for the people who uh <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's great. That's uh, uh, yes. for the younger people floppy disk was this little square <laughs> thing that you put into a computer and that was what everything was on. I was, was clean to the uh, CD ROM. I was I was cleaning out my uh, I was cleaning out my office and uh, yeah a couple of days ago and I found some of the plastic, oh, yeah. uh, plastic discs yeah. which had had like one megabyte worth of space. It's like you know there's like yeah. well, back barely... in the day, Mike, when we um, created a comic book, we also created the comic on three and a half inch floppy. And would have it playing when we were trying to sell our comic book. So we were like one of the only companies that had that. And that was cutting edge technology. Like somebody had to program that for us. It's sad that that was cutting edge technology. But, uh, but, but just the bigger, you know. bigger thing with this, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think the problem that I'm noticing in the league is since the second half of the season has started, really the playoff part of the season, uh, Refereeing has changed. I've seen the change, and I feel like, yes, the headshots are getting called more frequently, but there's a lot of other stuff that's just not getting called at all. I, you know, I could point out the game in Philly yesterday because I sit next to a guy who's a referee, and when the Flyers were um, down one guy, I said, wasn't that just a holding? He goes, yeah, they could have been down two there. They eventually were down for two for 11 seconds. But it does seem like in the third period of games, guys are just getting mugged out there. Well, I, I and I didn't I didn't see I didn't see it, but I know that there was a big hullabaloo uh, in the the most recent Chicago Anaheim game uh, where Menchukov got into a fight with one of the uh, Hawks players, and there was it, it was. Uh, I know that Gibson got uh, got uh, a game misconduct for crossing the red line, so it got a little. Ahead. I mean, honestly, uh, what's what's the old expression uh, about uh, they'd have to build bigger buildings if they keep doing this kind of stuff? Right. It is entertainment. Now the thing is, it goes from entertainment to 
you know, on the edge when Rempe is hitting somebody on right. the button with the elbow. That's, you yeah. know, that's career, that's career threatening. A good fight, nobody, you know, did, did anybody complain about Rempe versus Ryan Reeves? It was the most, not it, that was a, no a notable moment in a very entertaining game. But True, but that's the, that's the fine line of all of this. It's like, you could be a fan, but you can't worry about this guy getting CTE because he's not worried about it. Like, that's just the reality. He's doing his job. That's his job. He signed on for it. So, and he is probably going to have five more fights the rest of the year, even though the Rangers clearly are telling him don't fight. No, I, I don't. Fight multiple games. Well, um, Tony Soprano just yeah. – uh, and I, I'm very happy to see this because this That's is – smart. A, He's earned it. He's earned yeah, it. Pro, and because Bobby McMahon was a UFA at the end of the year because he had played a couple years down in the American Hockey League. Um, I didn't uh, – I'll be curious to see the, uh, the AAV, but I would assume if I had to guess – because he's 27 and this is his first success in the NHL. I, I if if it's like around $900,000, you know, one way then that that would probably be 1.35. Okay, then that's not terrible. It's still I mean, what's he projected the score this year? Well, How this year he's got this year he's got 10 goals. He's got 10, right? So, so in, in, in about I'm sorry. How many points over in total? I'll pop that up. I think he had like 18, something like that. 18. So you figure if he gets a little better next year, he's like a 25-point guy. It's actually a good contract if he can get over 20 points yeah. a year. Wow. 40 games, 10 goals, 8 assists, 18 points. Wow. They, I wasn't yeah. looking, folks. No, but um, you know what I mean? If he could be a 10-10, 10-15 guy next year, it's worth it. Yeah, no. One, remember, 1 1.35 is basically the amount – close to the amount that you can bury on a, on a demotion. Right. So I, I don't think he's going to get demoted. Remember, he's big. Yeah. He's actually got NHL speed. He's got decent hands, too. He's got decent hands. He scored 21 goals in the American Hockey League well. last year. I mean, in, what, yeah, what's that, the difference that, of playing for the Growlers or playing for the Leafs? Yeah, that, that's just that's a that's a smart that's a smart contract. So that was yeah. that was good, some good business. Um but I'm not sure X uh, X uh, internet collapsed. So okay. uh, we'll, one, if anybody's got any questions in the chat, yeah, we'll... I, yeah I, I just um, I did put up some new content on NHLDraftBuzz.com. It um, I'm trying to think what my latest article was. Uh, oh, it was on uh, Max Plot, Derek's kid. So if you want to see that, I just gave an article to Full Press for. Brody Zemer, that's for the draft. So yeah, it, it's it's hilarious how many how many former Sabers and like remember uh, Dave Snuggerud, his son yeah. uh, Jimmy is a first, yeah. was a first round pick of the Blues, and having uh, you know he's going to be a very good NHL player now. Derek Plant, a former Saber, his son. It's like you know it must, there must there must not have been a lot to do in Buffalo. No, but you know it's uh, interesting because Plant was a Canadian, wasn't he? Oh no, he's from Minnesota. Um, Snuggerud was Canadian, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, a lot of these Canadians, they settled in Buffalo. But wasn't, didn't Snuggerud go to U.S. college? Wasn't he? Uh... Yeah, but I mean, because he's an American. But no, Snuggerud. He, Snuggerud. Oh, he, oh, he could have. Yeah, he could have been a Canadian in American college. I mean. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did, but I'm. Just... Paul Correa was Canadian, wasn't he? Yeah, and he went to Maine. He played at Maine, and he played at Maine, yeah. Uh, Dave Snuggerud is from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Oh, so he's another Minnesota guy. Okay. So that's yeah, and he played three years at the University of Minnesota, which isn't. So these are a couple of Minnesota guys that um, you know, it, you know, it's funny we we probably don't give Minnesota enough credit because they may not win national championships all the time or anything. But there's an awful lot of hockey players, NHLers from Minnesota. There are awesome. so don't so don't use the line from Animal House that Jimmy Snuggerud is a legacy from Harrisburg. Right, right. <laughs> but he he is also going to the University of Minnesota. I and think that's this a good question. Put pop yes, that one. Oh, go ahead. We're up. There you go. 
What is your opinion of coaches putting lines in a blender still this time of year as they prepare for the playoffs? Does it hurt the team to build up chemistry? Well, okay. The Leafs do pairings. They they keep Matthews and Marner together, right. and then they rotate the left wingers or Tavares and Nylander. So they do have some consistency in terms of lines. I mean, I think the reason that they shake these things up is because they don't want to give the other the opposition co- opposition coaches the matchups that they can you know okay we're playing Nyes Matthews and Marner so we're gonna match Barkoff against that line well maybe that changes if you mix up that line then you don't you know you may want to match up Barkoff against Matthews but if you're gonna put one checking line together against one line if you split other players that that sort of defeats the purpose so. You know, I mean, you could say that they toy with team chemistry, but if they do that all year, then how much are they toying with team chemistry? Because if they're doing it all year, they're used to it. Yeah, so like yesterday, I can just go with the Flyers. They threw lines in the blender. They had completely different lines. Um, They won the game 3-2. It wasn't terribly effective, but uh, they they inserted a few more youngsters, so uh, you could say they were getting a look at them. So I think in a way, Vepsis, it's good if you have, um, like, if this were just the beginning of Bobby McMahon being called up, when, like, the Leafs called him up at the beginning, you might have to put the lines in the blender to get him in there. But in the end, it's worked. It's, as we know, looking down the road, it's it's been worth a worthwhile thing. So I'm not against it. Yeah. Uh, maybe one more question here in the chat before we see here. Oh. Uh, Timothy Park is playing his uh, he's uh, being uh, the uh, the Boyle uh, Thomas Boyle he's giving us he's giving us ho- uh, baseball updates when this is a hockey show. Um thank you thank you thank you very much. Uh, let's see. He gave me football ones before so there you go. Uh when do, when does uh, the free agent college player signing free agent play they can do it now as soon as their teams get yeah, eliminated because they get eliminated. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. Once you know, once they're eliminated, um, they can, and it doesn't have to be seniors. But you know, if, it, if it's no. a junior and they're a draft pick, you know, like not like Nice was a was a junior. He signed with the Leafs after Minnesota after the national championship game. Um, yeah, these guys could sign as soon as their teams are eliminated because as soon as they sign, they've uh, surrendered their college eligibility. So right. Um, now the question is is whether guys like Jimmy Snuggerud or you know Will Smith or all the any of these guys in US colleges who are freshmen or sophomores will whether they sign. I mean Snuggerud is Saint a St. Louis draft pick. St. Louis is in a playoff race. Snuggerud might be somebody who plugs into the blues lineup right away. Well, I did an article, Mike, on NHLDraftBuzz.com about a week ago yeah. and brought up some players. Um, like Brandon, Gabe Perot, and Rucker McGrory. And as an example, if I'm Winnipeg, I look at McGrory because he's already physically ready. Um, mm-hmm. he was he was not having a good goal scoring season, according to him, uh, a couple you know about a month or two ago. But he's picked it up. I could see him. I could you know the Smith one will be interesting because. I don't think the one guy wants to break up the band unless they really feel like they can win a national championship or do actually win it. So I yeah. think that one's going to be a tougher one to figure out. And I don't know how anxious San Jose is to start the clock on him. Right. With them being such a that terrible be an issue too. You're right. Yeah. They're probably telling uh, you know, uh, we're going to we're going to suck out. we're going to we're going to suck next year. So stay in college another year. Right. But if he wants to come out, yeah. Then uh, yeah. You gotta do it because you saw what happened with the whole cut or go chase system, you know, situation. Right. If a player wants to come out, you sign him. And if he's a player like that, you give him the bonuses. And that's what you do. Right. But the only the only thing is if you don't think he's NHL ready and you do what Philadelphia is not, what is your option? All of a well, sudden I mean, if you send him you, back, you're risking it. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is, okay, if you're San Jose. And you know you're taking Will Smith fourth overall, and he wants to come out, then you need to sign him. But if you say, okay, we'll sign you, um, and we'll start you, but we want to play you the rest of the season with the Barracudas, 
because then his ELC is not kicking in. It's he's on an ATO. Right. And the- again, as we saw in previous cases, right. These high level guys don't want to do that. Right. But that, you know, like, but that's the determination. If we think you're ready, it doesn't matter. You know- the determination, even for the sharks. And I spoke to Shang Pang last night, you know, about their system. I didn't bring up Smith right away, but I said he could be playing very soon. He didn't, Shrug that off. You have to do it. Even if he's not ready, you got to eat the year of ELC by letting him play this year, and you got to bring that in, that guy in. Why? Because he's your number one center. Right. right now, he's presumably your number one center in the future. You can't mess that up. Right. Unless, yeah. you, unless you unless you get the win the lottery and you pick Celebrini. Right. Then that that's the only way that changes. But again. Um, the Celebrini part happens way after the Will Smith part. So the, the problem is if Smith comes out and says, I want to play there, even if it's just one game, you got to let him play. Yeah, to burn the first year of his ELC. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we'll be back on Friday with another edition of the Hockey Buzzcast for the departed Eklund for Russ Cohen. I'm Michael Agello. And remember where the fireworks are. (laughs) And remember without the bus, it's just hockey.